What do the customers see when he enters the store? That's right, a huge amount of all kinds of benefits. And he's faced with the choice of what to buy, since his options are limited. First of all, we assume that most buyer is quite rational and strive to get a big profit and satisfy their needs. This quality of good is called utility. The usefulness of a good its ability to satisfy the customer's need, since we consider such a science as economics. Then, in economics, it's useful to have a benefit, for which people are willing to sacrifice something to get it, for example, time, effort or money. People's recognition of this usefulness of the good and assessment of the degree of this utility is called value. People value only what is useful to them, and the more useful the good, the more valuable it is. But in real life, we very often encounter cases when there is no connection between utility and the value of the good. For example, very useful things aren't always appreciated by people. For example, they don't appreciate such a useful good as water or air, but many smokers appreciate as a harmful good as cigarettes. For some people, the good is valuable, but for others it's of no value. If you're a smoker, then for you such a benefit as cigarettes will be more valuable than for a non-smoker. Different units of the same good for one consumer are valued differently. That is, with an increase in the amount of any good from the buyer, each additional unit is valued less and less. This fact has received such a name as the theory of marginal utility, and its meaning lies in the fact that people value not the usefulness of the good in general, but its individual units that satisfy needs of different importance and intensity. Let's consider the first option in more detail. Imagine that you have finished training. Today is a very hot day, and you are thirsty. You have five glasses of water. So, the first glass of water has a marginal utility of 100 units, that's an arbitrary value. Once you have enjoyed the first glass of water, then the marginal usefulness of the second glass will be 70. We are already less happy with him than the first one, but we still experience a small amount of thirst and we drink this glass with pleasure. We will already want to drink the third glass with a less desire. The fourth one we will not want to drink and the indicator will approach zero, and from the fifth one we will feel bad at all and the usefulness will become negative. The need for source is saturated with each glass of water, therefore each subsequent unit of goods, in our case a glass of water, gives less satisfaction than the previous one. This is called the law of decreasing marginal utility, or Gossens first law. According to this law, the marginal utility of each unit of any good depends on its quantity available to a person. We can illustrate the law as in the form of a table or graph. If the amount of any good is enough to meet the need, then its value will be low. Even if the satisfying need is very important, we don't value water so much. Conversely, if a not very important need isn't fully satisfied, then the value of the good will be high, for example, gold. This fact is called the Smith paradox. Different human needs have different significance. The overall utility of a certain amount of a good depends on how they are distributed among different needs. The question arises, how do we distribute the limited amount of benefits available to us? in order to extract the greatest overall utility. The second law of growth on or the law of maximizing total utility can answer the questions. Its essence is to get the maximum utility from a certain amount of good. You need to use each of them in such quantities in which the marginal utility of all the goods consumed will be equal to the same value. We came to the store. We have $40. There are two products that we would like to buy. Let there be a package of peanut butter and a chocolate bar, and the price is $10 and the $5 respectively. How do we allocate our budget for the purchase of goods based on their usefulness? We will evaluate the usefulness based on subjective ideas and present the data in the form of a table. The total marginal utility will be equal to marginal utility of product A divided by to the price of uh, A, equal to the marginal utility of product B divided to the price of product B. In our case, this rule will be achieved if we buy two packages of peanut butter, 
and four bars of chocolate. The other combination will not meet the rule or marginal utility or is beyond our budget.